we've ever known. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Saint. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Science at the University of Melbourne, and it's my very great privilege this evening to thank Brian for an extraordinary presentation. Uh, Brian has agreed to take a few questions, and uh, I think, given the, the time and everything, I'd like to uh, invite uh, three questions. If there are people who move, there's a microphone just at the bottom of the stairs right here with Robin Trafalgar with their hands up. If anyone uh, has a question, as I say, the first three that get there are welcome to, uh, welcome to ask a question. Uh, this is exciting, everyone. It's the, uh... <laughs> you can have one. You can have one. <laughs> can you sing one of your songs? <laughs> I've never been recorded singing for an extremely good reason. <laughs> I only play the keyboards. So um, I'll decline your kind of. <laughs> but thank you for that. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Thanks very much for everything tonight. Um, my question's simple. So you said before that time passes differently, like the satellites are moving slightly differently. So. The, we have astronauts on the International Space Station at the moment. What's the implication for them? Are they aging more slowly than we here on Earth? And could we ever use this to extend human life? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. So the answer to the second bit is, yes, you could use it to extend human life in, in, in a very strange but correct way. So if you imagine um, getting into a rocket ship now, Traveling away out to a distant galaxy, let's say you fly off to the Andromeda galaxy fast and then turn around and come back again. The Andromeda galaxy is 2.2 million light years away, so you might think it would take you 2.2 million years to get there. But in fact, the closer you travel to the speed of light, from your perspective in the rocket, the shorter the distance becomes. As I, I may have mentioned, if I didn't, I should have mentioned, Einstein's theory also says that moving rulers shrink. Um, so the distance between those two places shrinks. The extreme version, by the way, is if you travel at the speed of light, the distance shrinks to zero, which is a very strange thing to think about, what the universe looks like to a beam of light. But anyway, you can travel off and you can travel back again. To everybody sat here on Earth watching your clock, it would be ticking more slowly because you're traveling very fast. So you would perhaps get to Andromeda and come back in, let's say, four or five years, depending on if you travel at 99.99% speed of light, let's say. When you got back, thousands, tens of thousands of years would have passed on Earth. So you would extend your lifetime, but only in a technical sense. For you, your time is your time. Your clocks tick at one second per second. So you, know, for you, you live for 70 years or 80 years and you'll still live for 70 years or 80 years according to you, it will feel like that. However, you can travel into the future of your home planet and return actually indefinitely far in the future if you can contrive to travel as close to the speed of light as you want. So it's a strange thing. Um, so that's the, kind of the most, I suppose, <coughs> cool bit of your question. The actual question about the International Space Station